Augur is a prediction market platform that rewards a user for correctly predicting future events. Hey everyone, on this video of Proof of Make, we are going to be talking about Augur. Augur is a prediction market. What's a prediction market? A prediction market is a place where people can place bets about events. If you think event A is going to happen, you put a bunch of money behind that. And if you're right, you make money. Same thing for event B. Prediction markets and Augur are used today to try to figure out the outcomes for things like cryptocurrency prices, political campaigns, sports events, and even the weather. How does this work? And what does Augur look like? Today, Mike and I will be sitting down to take a look at the Augur platform and maybe place a few bets ourselves. All right, now we're gonna take a look at Augur with Mike. Augur is a prediction market. That's what it is. It's utilizing crypto as its engine, but prediction markets have been around for a very long time. And I remember this was old. This has uh, yeah. been this has been around for a long one this, of the first DApps on Ethereum. This is one of the first announced and one of the first to hit the testnet DApps. Um, I wouldn't. Yeah, it's a DApp. And one of the things about it that's really cool is that it opens up prediction markets, which are generally closed off to everybody. So now the crowd has the potential of becoming much, much larger. And that means the predictions can become that much more accurate. We used this a lot, a long, like a year ago, a year and a half ago. Yeah. It was really hard to use. How, is that, how has that changed at all? I think the usability. So what we're going to do is let's head over to the platform right now. As you can see, the usability, the, the look of it has improved quite a bit. Because before when it was on the test net, it had that red bar and it was really hard to get around. Now, actually using it and sending through trades... It's pretty easy. So you said sending through trades. I am you talking mean, about sending through trades. But I thought those were predictions. You're using shares to create the predictions. And it's the proportion of the shares and the trading prices of those shares that determines the prediction set. That's complicated. So how do It we, is complicated. So how do we, so how so, do, in practical use though, which party, okay, so this was something that people, right. that already happened. Yeah. So there's a phasal state. So when it starts out, somebody opens a market. Okay. And then they set some fees and some ways that they're going to make money opening the market. And then it goes into a phase called in reporting. In reporting means that people who hold lots of rep token, the reputation token. That's, that's Augur's token. That's the Augur's token. Okay. Can then report that the event happened or did not happen. After that, it is resolved and people on each side of the market can pull out their funds and make money. So is this in reporting here, or is uh, this what, what, what the right now we are filtering for open? So these are all open that you can bet on. Well, that's already that's already happened. Yes. So after it's already happened, you can the market itself, as you can see here, you can still trade on it. So I could just easily make these funds. Right. But you'll see here that if you try to go on the winning side, the expense of getting in is incredibly high, while the benefit is incredibly low. Also, it costs more now. Yes, based on so the price, so the prices are, are pr proportional to the number of shares that exist. Got it. So every think of it that unless you're fulfilling an already existing order, you're an automatic market maker or taker. Okay. Yeah. So this is like a like an actual exchange yes. for predictions. Yeah. Um, it, that's one of the things that I wish they had was a little bit more feedback. And in their Reddit, they're talking about doing more of this, but having more of this kind of thing, kind of describing sort of how this aspect ties into this aspect. Got it. Because I think this is ultimately the data you're trying to get out, but this is the action that causes that data. Okay, so how hard is it to make a prediction? Uh, well, that depends on what the market is, I think. Can we, can we try one? Sure, let's take a look. So as you can see, there's all sorts of genres that you can go for. There's cryptocurrency, kind of betting on prices. Let's do that. Oh, can we do Cosmos? Cosmos is something that we used a lot. So this thing takes quite a, a bit of time for things to load, it looks like in here. Why is, why is that? As you can see, if you look at the uh, URL bar after you go to the web app, it's on an IPFS server. Okay. So, so this is all this all this data is split up all over the world. That's right. So it's being sharded into the interplanetary file system. So things are going to run a little bit slower, but it's a truly decentralized application. So it's, Okay, so truly decentralization, but really, really slow. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Okay, so yeah. will Cosmos mainnet launch before uh, the end of the year? I would like to say... They've let us down. They're supposed to launch the end of last year, mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm hoping. I talked to the development team. They said they're going to go for within the next three months of now. And it, it looking at can we can we say no? I don't think it's going to okay. happen. All right. So we we have our belief now, right? Yeah. But before we do that, we need to actually look at the market itself for a second. Okay. 
First, we need to look at the fee. They're going to take 1%. Whatever happens or whatever action happens, 1% gets taken by the maker, the creator of the market. Let's look at the expiration. The expiration makes sense. 9 a.m. UTC, January 1st. That's not quite before, but it means resolution occurs pretty quickly. And then how much is actually being traded on the market? How healthy is the market? So you can see there is one here that we can short against by saying no. Oh, there, so there is one person. Oh, that was, one that was the original person, maybe. Right. The, the market so when you, created, set, when you create the market, you, you can it. come in and you can start the market by funding it on one side or another. Okay. Yeah. So they says yes. So yeah. can we say yeah, can we say no? Yep. So the way we say no is by doing sell. Because we'll, we'll really win bigly if they actually do do it. So it's kind of like hedging here. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, so, that's, a, that's an interesting. So what does it look like when you try to create a market? What's that experience like? All right. Ticks. There we go. We set up our question. So let's say we wanted to do. Will AMP launch before December 2nd? Now, what type is it? It's a yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I don't think we need anything else. All right. Resolution. How will we decide the outcome? Is it going to be general knowledge or outcome will be detailed on a public website? I think it'll be general knowledge. It's general people, knowledge? Yeah, people will know All what right. talking about. Yeah. And who is the reporter? Um, I mean, obviously, it will be in our best interest for it just to be myself. So we could just say, oh, we're going to be the reporter. We're going to say, just trust us to give you the answer. There are dispute functions on here during the reporting phase, which is why the reporting phase is a an amount of time. So if we report falsely, somebody can go research and then everything we put in here gets... It seems like it would just be better for most people to say myself anyways, right? As opposed to someone else. So yeah, myself. Okay, myself. Yeah, I think most people would put that. Right. Okay. And if that's the case as well, people may not come into your market though. So everything we're doing is part of the marketing for your market. Got it. Okay. So people will just look at that and go, well, they're reporting on themselves. I'm not going to participate in your market. Oh, uh, no, okay. No, that, makes that makes sense. That makes sense. And then here is where we say pick the fee. So after the market resolves, what fee do we take? Okay. All right. And then 10 shares, 0 0.01. And then you, okay. Cool. Looks like we're already reviewing it, but we just. Next. We do not have enough rep. Oh, so you need REP you need in order REP to, to create. do that. Yeah. Actually, I think I have another account that has REP. Can I just switch between accounts here? Let's see. Oh, and then we lost all our work. We lost everything. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I get an idea of how it works. Oh, yeah. 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 That kind of stinks, though, right? There's a little UI things like that. Like, yeah. you switch accounts, and then all of a sudden you lose all your work because the transaction wasn't actually created until then. So, I mean, it, it looks like it's early, but something that um, they can, that, that they, but they, they've definitely come a long way. Yeah. Since what we first saw. Yeah, it, it's, it's a pretty complex thing. And, and one of the reasons for that is that you have a lot of inter-human interaction that you're trying to quantify and then work with. So you have dispute settings, you have resolve. There's a staking system behind it. There's a lot of staking involved, um, a lot of behind the scenes things, and a lot of kind of making assumptions about what certain numbers mean. Um, so actually using it, I, I don't think it's that bad. The user experience probably could improve, but I mean, what's, we're in blockchain, so at the same time, we the concept to be bad. <laughs> the concept itself though, um, it has a lot of nuances that you have to learn. Thanks for so much for showing us uh, Augur. Yeah, no problem.